America, Tom Hand here with Americana Corner. Today we're discussing the race to the Dan River. After the Battle of Cowpens, General Daniel Morgan began a rapid retreat north to put some distance between him and Lord Charles Cornwallis's 2,500 veterans who were coming their way. To speed his pursuit, Cornwallis burned all excess baggage and wagons, and by February 10th, Cornwallis was only 35 miles away from the American army and closing fast. To gain time, General Nathaniel Green, the commander of the Southern Continental Army, split his force, sending Colonel Otho Williams and a light corps on a different route, hoping to pull Cornwallis away from the slow-moving main army. Cornwallis took the bait and followed Williams' trail while Green and the bulk of the men moved north towards the Dan River on the Virginia border. They crossed the afternoon of February 14th, with Colonel Williams following the next day, just three hours ahead of the Brits. Although Cornwallis now held North Carolina unopposed, his force was worn down from the chase and withdrew to its supply base at Hillsboro. And in late February, Green re-entered North Carolina. General Greene's series of brilliant maneuvers to remain one step ahead of the British is known as the Race to the Dan. In seven weeks, the Americans covered over 200 miles on muddy, barely passable roads through almost uninhabited country and forded four large rivers. They did this with just the barest of provisions and in most cases, without adequate shoes or clothing. Green's leadership was inspirational and his superbly executed tactical retreat, one of the finest in the annals of American warfare, allowed the American army to live to fight another day. Next week, we will discuss the Battle of Guilford Courthouse. Until next time, may your love of country lead you. Thank you.